Last Sunday, during the live chat for the semi-finals of the Osiris League Season 4, many people started asking questions about the Korean Osiris League, the prize in cash, Rise of Kingdoms becoming an eSport in Korea, and therefore Koreans having a test server where to practice on. There are many misconceptions about this issue, and eventually I had to address it in a video. So, let's speak about it. Hello everyone and welcome to Week Gaming. I wish to make a premise. I have seen some people lashing out at the Korean teams and at the Korean community. During the live stream we touched an important topic. But raging or lashing out is always the easiest answer for the people that don't actually want to put the effort, sit down for a minute and understand what's going on. Saying that something is wrong without even justifying it or providing the base for a constructive discussion is always the quickest way out. I have talked with several people, both in the Korean community and not, and I tried to get a clearer picture of the issue. And in my humble opinion, the Koreans are not the issue at all. Damn! But let's try to build a perspective on the Korean community. South Korean players are known to dominate the esports scene across a variety of games. The country has a strong gaming culture and infrastructure, leading to a strong gaming market, which has a multi-trillion South Korean won market size. The South Korean government has announced plans to support the game industry by relaxing regulations as well as focusing more on esports teams and gaming events. By extending their ecosystem, the government is hoping to create more jobs in the next years and help the gaming industry continue its development. That's how dedicated Koreans are in the gaming world. Check the links in the description down below if you want to read some articles by yourself. According to a research led by the Korean government, in 2020, 70.5% of the Koreans reported to play games of any sort. And they see that not only as entertainment, but as a job opportunity as well. And myself, as a person who owns a small YouTube gaming channel, can totally understand the potential. Thanks for being here, by the way. Turn like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. It helps me big time and it's 100% free. So, if the Koreans get an exclusive national tournament and Rise of Kingdoms becomes an esport in their country, why should they step out of the international version of the tournament? At the end, as we said, Koreans are very famous for being just exceptional in esports. I don't see why they should not be exceptional in Rise of Kingdoms too. They are dedicated, they play all from the same time zone, they have excellent internet connections and many teams even meet in person and rent computers to play together. That's an amazing team spirit and they should just be admired for that. So if you expected this video to be a rant against them, well, you could not be more wrong. The Koreans are not the issue. I also understand very well offering the cash prize for the winners. That's what you do in esports. Also because they basically played all the same accounts with all the same stuff and the playing field was completely even from the beginning. While in the international version of the Osiris League, that happens only in the Invitational. So when a team has already reached the top and the Invitational mode is added in the main servers. I predicted this game becoming an esport way, way, way long ago and I thought that they were using the Invitational as they did, like a base to test these out. And if every team in the international Osiris League had the same possibility possibilities, so to play with the invitational rules from the beginning and not only at the end of the tournament, probably there will be other teams in the playoffs, why not? Maybe smaller dedicated teams who don't have the firepower to face the more seasoned and experienced team with a lot of big players. About this point, it's also true that Korean servers launched when the game was already at server 1400, 1500. Koreans were heavily disadvantaged versus earlier international servers in terms of new commanders. Early Korean servers had to deal with Attila and Takeda in KVK Season 2 before it was blocked, and also Vuzetian owners migrating back to replay KVK Season 2 one more time before it was blocked. And again, dealing with YSS and Theodora when Korean players just got Attila and Takeda and so on. You get the point. Koreans were always behind 
with the new commanders. And according to few voices in the Korean community, that's primarily why they did not win the first two Osiris Leagues. On this point, I may reserve my right to disagree, because OV in Season 1 won by having 6 players using Tier 4 units, myself included, and having just one single Wu Zetian garrisoning the structures, versus having an opposing team full of Wu Zetian. There are tens of replays on YouTube, feel free to take a look. On the other side, it's also true that in Season 3, we completely obliterated K374 in the finals. <laughs> How, how do you fight this? I mean, I see the the other two rallies from K374 that have hit and are failing, so they're, they're not going to take a structure. Um, in the middle here, if you have a fight like this in the middle, like, there's nothing you can do against that. And that was also because of commanders, and not only because of our totally new strategy involving new skills never used before like Heaven's Grace, which allowed us to pick three arcs and counter to the death that K374 used on the third arc. Afterwards you saw that Lilith nerfed the skill, but we were the first ones using that, like we were the first ones together with UCS to self-kill the tier 1 units to acquire extra skill points, thing that has been removed as well by Lilith. My point is that depending on the metagame, and the strategy, the commander advantage may or may not count as much. We won two invitational tournaments to where we all had the same commanders, but we could very well lose to V636 in the invitational of season 3, both because they are just great, and also because the strategy and the dedication was very strong on their side, like it was on ours. What matters the most is the playtime and the amount of hours that you spend talking to your team and discussing strategies. Now, I also understand allowing the Korean teams to play in the international Osiris League other than in the Korean version of the Osiris League, otherwise that will be discriminatory. They are spending money like everyone else or even more than anyone else in the game and they are entitled to have the same opportunities. But the truth is, practice makes perfect. Many teams like OV and UCS are international teams with people from all over the world and you can be sure that when someone is free in Asia, on the other side of the world in the United States, somebody else is waking up or going to work, and vice versa. The only time where there could be the opportunity for everyone to be present to a practice game would of course be the weekend, and that's not allowed in the real server. Now let's leave on the side the fact that practicing requires a lot of gems for everyone, not only to schedule the actual practice, but also because you need to practice in the same conditions you would play the actual game, so using a 50% arm expansion and a statistic token, attack or defense, and those cost more than 2000 gems per player if you buy them discounted whenever you can. And let's leave on the side to the fact that the winners of the Korean League JST are now in the finals of the International League. They probably would have been there anyway, because they are great, but do you think that us in OV would have won 4 tournaments, 2 championships and 2 invitationals if we did not spend literally millions of gems in practice and countless hours in polishing the strategies? Not to speak about the fact that we had a higher actual playtime in the league, because advancing means that you keep practicing and you keep fighting against top tier teams and there is no better practice than that. Facing different teams, facing different strategies. I really believe that OV will not be OV if we did not proceed through every single tournament and kept sacrificing our time and money every single week. And not only OV, there are many other teams out there. I'm speaking about OV because it's my team, it's my own experience on my own skin. This leads me to disclaimer number two. We lost this season not because of the Koreans. We deserved to lose. We could have lost against anybody, there is no perfect team and nobody is the best, and our deepest congratulations went to the winners. We are not salty about that. I could avoid to specify this, but since this is my channel, and I'm in OV since the beginning of my journey in rock, I felt like I had to highlight this point. Because again, that's not about OV or the Koreans, that's about some poor choices in deciding the modes and the ways the teams will spend their time resources and money in building an effective strategy. So long story short, the Koreans have absolutely no fault in all of this. They are just guilty of being great, honestly. But don't tell them this too much, otherwise they keep practicing forever and nobody will win anything anymore. Yes! Cool! Cool! Oh yes! Very nice! 
The only problem here is that after four seasons of Osiris League, we are asking for things to be corrected. But this does not want to be a rant video. I am here to provide some solutions to and open a constructive discussion. Number one, Lilith could allow any team in the international server to practice on weekends, and they could make the practice games free, other than providing free automatic attack defense and army expansion tokens to the players, at least during the tournament. 2. Lilith could make every single Osiris League tournament a tournament with invitational rules, where the playfield is the same for everyone and also smaller teams will have the chance to compete, without having to worry about the troop count, the commanders, the equipments and everything else. Koreans would have not been in disadvantage in the first two seasons, for example. Well, I understand the first season of Osiris League being a sort of experiment for Lilith, but we are now on season number four and some aspects are just not acceptable anymore. 3. Lilith could open an international public test server that only allows player to play the Ark of Osiris mode, so if the normal servers cannot handle the stress on the weekends, the test server can kick in and help everyone out. And those are just three of countless solutions to make everything fair and simple for everyone. Lilith, you know you can reach to me anytime, you have my contacts and you know who I am, let's just speak about it. And what do you guys think about it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for being here and being an awesome community. I literally keep making videos because of all of you. As always, I will see you on the next one. Ciao!